Okay. As you should. Uh, beautiful. All in focus. Life is good here. Um, awesome. Episode 81 of uh, From Everyone. I'm here with Ethan Harrison from Great Again American Ghost, my man. Thank you for making the trip through. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I know it was a long round trip through Jersey to get here. It was here, fine. But... No, you know. Yeah, we just drove through Jersey for fun to be here <laughs> in Connecticut. Everyone drives through Jersey for fun. That is yeah. the, the hub of all things yeah, fun. That is their motto. Drive through here for fun. <laughs> Absolutely. With a mm -hmm. Bon Jovi rest stop, which Dude. is always like blows my mind like i don't think i would be happy to ever like it's kind of cool to have a rest stop named after you but like knowing that it's just a hub for the entire east coast to piss and shit is that is, is that, like is that the peak of success or is that the less I don't know. is that like the the nadir of success i think it's yeah i think you're too famous at that point like, it's just like tone it down we don't need this like it's, give me a key to the city either, whatever but like yeah, it's either the dearth or the peak <laughs> of success i can't tell which one there was a james gandolfini one okay and we we tried to stop at it just because it was a James Gandolfini rest stop. Interesting. Where is it? I, it's like right when you get into Jersey. Also it's the Jersey, first okay. one, and it was closed. Damn. Yeah, I was I, like, what is it? What do they have at the Gandolfini's James? like mafia stuff, right? Am I? <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy who played Tony Soprano. Yes. Okay. See, remember <laughs> we were talking so about then it's kind of on before part the that. camera tur yeah. got turned on. We were talking about nerd nerdness. So, that I'm not a video game nerd, but I'm a like a knowledge of movies and shows and books okay. nerd. That's all I have in here. Okay. And rock and roll knowledge. That's all I have. <laughs> that's kind of all you need in our that's world. That's all I have. To be a lyricist, but, yeah, that's a pretty yeah, good phrase exactly, to have. Exactly. Uh, what's the show you're fixated on currently? What's the one that show, is currently? I'm, dude, thanks for asking. Absolutely. House. House. Yes. Interesting. I've watched four seasons of House in two weeks. Wow. There's 24 episodes a season. <laughs> so much. Dude, in the yeah, in the 2000s they used to make a lot of episodes of a thing. More and that was a says, yeah. season, yeah. Now Netflix is like here are six episodes of the show and it costs 20 billion dollars. And those six episodes really could be one episode. Could like, be one. It, this whole documentary episode. thing makes you so mad at these like Brutal. eight part documentaries Brutal. of like give me an hour and a half. Brutal. Like we don't need Yeah, all this. a 2 hour documentary about Plenty. the WWE would have been fine. <laughs> Plenty. Instead there's eight episodes of that show. It's fucking <laughs> To be fair crazy. with that one maybe there is enough evidence. No, but like, that's the need, thing but... is that the the that one yeah. now we're talking about wrestling, which I also have a stupid knowledge. I don't know what's that's wrong the other with one? me. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. I have a Rain Man knowledge of wrestling for some reason. <laughs> um there's so much worse shit. Yep. That McMahon definitely did. And that one was like pretty kind. And it was just a bunch of stuff you already knew. Yeah. I was just like, okay, this is not that exciting. Mm -hmm. Like the weirdest ones to me are like the trials in progress that get documentaries made about them. It's like we don't even know if the guilty or innocent. We don't even know what's going on. It's here. like those are the yeah. weird ones. There's he's like he's I can say this because I I can say this. Because he's not. You can say whatever me. you want. Yeah. yeah, I can say whatever I want. He's one hundred percent guilty of sex trafficking. <laughs> yes. He's a fucking horrible person. And like that documentary was like, so like, what do you think about uh, wrestlers dying young? And he's like, well, I don't think that's my fault. And I'm like, yeah, okay, kind of an asshole yeah, answer. Yeah, it could but be like, someone's fault. Yeah, yeah it's, if it's anyone's it's, fault, <laughs> it's theirs, then yours. I, uh, but no one asks him. They're like, do you traffic in humans? <laughs> he's like, no questions about it. He just gets up and leaves. One of uh, the guy who did the artwork for this podcast, Zadak, who you might know from Boundaries back yeah, in the day. Yeah, I fucking uh, love Zadak. Zadak just got hired to do graphic design at WWE, which <sighs> is the coolest shit ever. Good it's for so him. Sick, but it's such a now funny he's part time of the evil empire. Hired, I, like, <laughs> yeah, it's a wild time. I have a friend who writes for Disney. Interesting. Okay. And we're doing like a podcast together. Beautiful. And like it's in production right now, and it's it's a podcast about like people in history who have sucked. There's no shortage of them. Unlimited. But yeah. like. He can't discuss Disney stuff. He's like, I can't. Interesting. Like Walt Disney, not an awesome dude. Not awesome. He yeah. can't say that though. Yes. I can say that. He can't say it. <laughs> yeah, he had some hot takes back in the day. He, so he, leave he, it like Did he? Didn't he? You know? <laughs> Before we get too far into all the fun things Walt Disney said, uh, Great American Ghost has a new album coming out called oh, yeah. Tragedy of the Commons. It'll be out uh, January 31st of next year through Sharp Tone Records. Uh, I know a single just came out yesterday. Uh, Lost in the Outline just came out. Uh, I know we're heading to Australia in the coming months. Yes. What all is going on in the Great American Ghost? Give me yeah, a 30 second plug of where people should go to get tickets for this, where they go find the album. Uh, yes. What is happening in the immediate coming months here? Okay. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to Australia. You can get tickets for it uh, at theartismurder.net. Huge. Um, they're headlining the tour, so the tickets are on their website. You can go there. Beautiful. Get the tickets. Uh, otherwise, um, we have a new record coming out, Tragedy of the Commons, and you can pre-order that on sharptone.com, or you can go to our personal like URL, which is tragedyofthecommons.com, uh, I believe. Fire. 
tough to know off the top of my head. <laughs> well, but we all below, but yeah, we're we'll get close it. Yeah, yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, go below. If you sound confident, it, it works. I yeah. know, right? Yeah. I think it's actually TOTC.com. Close enough. I think I fucking nailed it. Sure. Um, a second try. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can, go there. Editing. We're good. you can go there. Uh, there's an exclusive vinyl there that you can only get from us. Hell yes. Uh, there are very few of them, actually, because I don't want to have a bunch left over. So I want them gone. So uh, there's a vinyl. Grab one. Um, we have a show in our hometown in Manchester, New Hampshire on December 14th. Mm-hmm. And it's with. Uh, I and it's a hundred bands here, say, so I'll be very impressed. I can't say what band is direct support okay. when we're launching this. Sure. But you'll find out in like three days after this is released. Is that like a radius clause kind yes. of thing? Is that yeah. normally the issue yeah. there? But if you just look at the shape of their logo, you'll figure it out. <laughs> and then uh and then we're playing with uh No Cure and Johnny Booth and uh Cemented in Fear, yes. and Heavyweight and Blood Tithe. Hell yes. That was pretty impressive. We got through everyone there. I told you. uh, As I was looking through this podcast, uh, I searched Great American Ghosts and yeah, kind of followed that. And one of the things that popped up was a Facebook post of my own from 2017 of shooting you guys at the Four Year Strong Christmas show. Okay. So it feels like a really full circle moment here. Where Yeah, you went from opening this one, I guess it's the Palladium main stage, so still, but (laughs) now it's your back back own tradition to get through the driver's seat again. Yes. It's kind of a beautiful full full circle thing to watch this tradition keep growing. And And ironically, they have their holiday show the same night. (laughs) Nice. And I was with Dan... Like two weekends ago at okay. Furnace Fest, and he was like, "When's your holiday show?" And I was like, "It is the 14th." And he was like, "Bummer." And Damn. I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "But the Venn diagram of us and Fourier, yeah, aren't that like they don't touch that much." <laughs> yeah, there may be some people in it, yeah, like me, <laughs> yep. who likes Fourier arguably more than I like my own band, but like, no one's like, "Do I go watch No Cure and Cemented in Fear, or do I go watch?" <laughs> You know, four year. I feel like those people are different. So. Definitely. I also feel like you guys don't play Manchester too much anymore. Like you've, yeah, had, no. had the benefit of growing outside of it. But yeah, it's like yeah, you get to go home and see that nucleus. Is like, yeah, the nucleus come into the Great American Ghost in Manchester, New Hampshire is different than the people going to Boston for four years strong. Like I agree. A, a home demographic there that I think gets to serve. Absolutely. I I, dude, we play we play Manchester once a year. Last year we didn't do it because we were in shambles. <laughs> um, <laughs> Every year it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're just in, objectively not in a good spot at all. <laughs> That's as a band. part of being a band. Yeah, yeah uh, but we are doing it this year, and we'll do it again next year. And mm-hmm. we try to bring one show to Manchester, New Hampshire, every single year because I grew up there. Yep. I went to my first show there, obviously, and uh, I saw Misery Signals when I was 14 Incredible. years old at the bomb shelter. Incredible. And if anybody is from Manchester that's listening or watching, they know that the bomb shelter was an absolute shit show. We had the Crunch House, which like the I Crunch don't know house? too much about, but they sound like they're in the same venue. Yeah. My but, buddies were here the other day describing the Crunch House is like smaller than this basement, like about the size of this, and it was just crammed. Too so many you're breaking people the in. fourth wall. They don't know it's a basement. It oh looks yeah, like, it's a studio. It looks like, yeah. <laughs> the basement of my castle. Your beautiful castle yes. with Ivy. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the Crunch House. Yes. Yeah, the bomb shelter was always wet. Like to the touch, like frat house juice on the I don't floor, know. kind of wet. I don't know. It's the first place I ever saw somebody do cocaine, like in real life. <laughs> That's a cultural experience. Off the yeah. back of a toilet. That's I didn't know the. I was just like, I was like 13, yeah. 14 years old. I don't old. know too much about this venue, but I don't think that toilet was recently. I didn't cleaned know much either. about shows. And I was like, this is how they all are? And the answer is no. <laughs> Not at all. But that's fine. Those yeah. were. The, sometimes Those ones they were. certainly are. Yeah. You're but, the right, right crowd. Yeah. So now it's like full circle. I like playing shows in Manchester. I love playing shows in Manchester and I love playing in front of people that I, it's like a weird mixture of like people who like my band and Mm -hmm. like people I grew up with and people I work with. How does that compare to the Australia shows where I think from like an outsider to me playing Sydney, Australia would be the Mecca because it's who flow. How did I trick people to get across the world? Dude, Okay. But it's like being home feels like solid question. Yeah. It's so it's different. Of course. Because in Manchester, you're like play a show in Manchester and it goes really well. And you can be like, and you've played that venue when there were ten people there. Yes, I assume. and you're like, look at look at what we're yeah. doing now. Yeah. You know, we got a new record, and I yeah. love you, and well, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah. And it's like my mother is there, and yeah. my mom's like, that was a very good show, darling. She's like, you're a born star or some shit like <laughs> the that. British mom, really yeah. nice thing to say. Yes, but then you go to Australia, and this is it's funny you ask because me and <laughs> me and Nico, Nico plays guitar in Great American Ghost. We went to Australia two years ago with Alpha Wolf. And it was like the first tour in Australia. We were like filling in with them, or like just you guys, the only people we were, Great American Ghost tour. Were it was on Great that American run. Ghost. Pale, it was Pale Dust, Great American Ghost, Fit for a King, Alpha Wolf. Huge. It was the first tour in Australia after COVID. Gotcha. Literally the first one. So we go, and Nico and I have been doing this band a long time together. Mm-hmm. And so 
we're so fucking jet lagged, right? I can swear. I can't imagine. Yes. Can I swear? Oh, please I swear. do. Cool. All the swears you would we're like. We're so yeah. fucking jet lagged. And like, it's, it's such a, it's a feeling you can't fully explain until you feel like you're time traveling, but like yeah. in a shitty way, yeah. you're like, like your legs are some in another time. Uh, I can't imagine it how sucks. that degree of it. Yeah. So we're standing yeah. on the side of the stage in Melbourne and we're about to go on stage and there's like a bunch of people in the front row. And this is not because Great American Ghost is a big band. We're not. Whatever. We're whatever we are. Sure. Thank you. At whatever level you give a shit about my <laughs> band, I really appreciate it. But we're in Melbourne and there are people in the front row and they have like gag shirts on because we like sold out of merch first night. They're just excited because it's COVID is over, right? For yeah. them. And uh, for America, it was always over. <laughs> and uh, so like we're standing there and me and Nico are super jet lagged and we're just looking and there's like a row of people and like four or five of them are crying and they're wearing gag merch. Jesus. And me and Nico are like, I like looked at Nico and I went, is this really fucking happening? And I don't mean that as in like, what a cool moment. I meant literally like, am I awake? Like what the fuck is going on? Just so jet lagged that and even Nico, reality Nico is a was crash. like, yeah. I don't know. And then we just walked out on stage and played. <laughs> and just did the thing. And they yeah. cried because they were like, they came up to merch after and they'd be like, we never thought we were ever going to see another live band ever again. Because they mm -hmm. took COVID very seriously. So they were like, it was the, we yeah. never thought we'd see another yeah. American band ever again. And like, we just like your band. We like your band. They don't love us enough to cry, you know, but the ratio was just way sure. off. Where they were just like <laughs> the relieved, relieved to yeah. be playing, to seeing a show. Is this like the, I've heard uh, bands describe like German fans in the same way. Like they give these like backhanded compliments of like, Oh, we like it. We don't really like you that much, but we do like you enough German, to be here kind of dude, thing. Is okay. it like a so of that in Australia? One of my favorite things is no, okay. it's not. Okay. Australian fans are very genuine and they're they're not that German fans aren't. Arguably German fans are the most genuine fans <laughs> in the fucking <laughs> Which world. Which is kind of beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Australian, there's a cat here. Hi, yes. Cat. Yeah. Um Yeah, they're like Australians are just like they're very straight to the point, but they're very positive. So they're like, oh no. Gotcha. You know, like we love you guys, whatever. They just say nice stuff. Germans are like, it's like if every single person at a show was a critic yeah. from like 2012 AP magazine. Mm -hmm. And it's literally like, it's like you are, you play the nice music, but um, third song, <laughs> you were off key. And I'm like, thanks. And they're like, you were also skinnier last <laughs> time you play here. And I'm like, awesome. And they're like, we'll take the black shirt in L. And we're like, cool, thanks. It's so funny how every band has that exact same, same story. Yeah, like, it's the same it, thing. It rings the how true it is and how widespread of a cultural thing it is and cultural it's, difference. It's crazy. But it's so funny. That, I went there yeah. first. The first time I ever went there, I, I toured with this band called Vanna. Mm -hmm. And I went there in 2011, and it was us and Straight From The Path. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> they literally were like, when some German kid was like, he walked up to Dave, who sang, sang in, in Vanna, and he was like, <laughs> he literally was like, you are fatter than other <laughs> singer was, but not as good. Like, and it was like I was like, "Holy fuck!" Which one do you prefer? Where I almost like the the like critic thing. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want certainly. That. <laughs> don't want to, there's a part of me that's like I almost think I would like that because at least I know it's real. Sure. Where sometimes I, I mean, think sure, like, and I'm sure being in a band is a similar thing. And for me, the music video equivalent is like when someone says I really like that video. I don't know if they're saying. I like that. Or they're saying, I want to work with you, so I'm just going to be nice to you so that we could try and start a good relationship. Yeah. I and mean, I guess like American culture has like a certain propensity to be like fake nice. Yes. Yeah. Which is like not awesome. And I don't love. But when there's like a line of Germans waiting for merch. And you just and know, you you know lashes. you're going to get told <laughs> that you fucked up, you know. The second song <laughs> on the merch side, yeah. you just right. I know the second You're song. Like you was were off time yeah. in the breakdown of Scorched Earth. I'm like, I know. <laughs> and then it's just like all of them are just like Fair. that was not as good. You but know, then the one guy who thing. goes, that was awesome. It's like, oh, they okay. don't do that. Oh, okay. They just, <laughs> they, those ones just don't say anything. Fair enough. They're just yeah. like, I take black and L, and that's it. <laughs> it's always black and L. The black shirt, or they. I don't want to rag on German fans. Yeah. I love them, obviously. I'm sure equally yeah. like yeah. all of my children. I guess. <laughs> but no, I, they're they're like. They're, they'll do other things like they'll be like, I want that shirt, but in a, in blue. Yeah. It's, and I'm like, I don't fucking have <laughs> that. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, it's, this is it. Yep. It's like a white shirt. And they're like, I would prefer this in blue. And I'm like, I don't, what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. It's fun Good for me. them. I, the what only if way, I did? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to find out. The only way that I have the, like the 
my frame of reference of the world is through soccer. Where I grew up playing soccer and like playing FIFA and like just knowing all the players from around the world. And so like then comparing soccer leagues and soccer stadiums is a way that I can like quantify the world and be like, oh, English fans like to drink, but they do it and they drink differently than us. And sure. German fans are like kind of busy. So this is like always a fascinating like microcosm to me of like on a personal level, of like I'm kind of going based off stadiums of people and how I perceive that stadium on TV. That's fair. And yeah. Shows the, are basically the same. It's kind of a similar kind of the same thing, idea. Yeah, of, like, yeah, UK, the UK, like playing shows in the UK are like um, some of my favorite shows that we play. And the fans are great. And they're very honest, but very welcoming and very friendly and, and very loving. But they're definitely like a no bullshit yeah. crowd. Yes. And then also like you get treated by the promoters not as well. Mm -hmm. But in Germany, they're very like honest to a fault. And then like you, they're just, they just take care of you. Like you've never in a band going to Europe in a band is like the most it's, it's, uh, it's wild. Just so diverse in the experiences. Well, they will be like, they will be like, this is your green room. And they're just walking into this massive fucking room and there's like all this food and you're like, what the hell? Cause you toured in America and they're like, Oh yeah, yeah the back, here's the Webster. Underground. Yeah. By the way, the freezer is your green room. Yeah, And so, like, when you go to Germany and they're like, this is it. And then you, like, are in awe. Yep. And they're like, is it not as good as you hoped? And you're like, no, I've this never is seen a room crazy. This nice. yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, it's wild. Hell yes. Uh, I know we are heading back over to promote the new album, of course. Uh, sure. The new album was done through Will Putney as well. Yeah. Is that how everything's been done recently? Or yes. Like, how, I guess, yeah, maybe play start this. How long has that relationship been going? Like, a couple albums worth? Is this, like, the second or third with him? A couple like, albums worth, yeah. Uh, Power Through Terror was the first one. So when we first started making like real records, mm -hmm. I guess. Not to say that like the stuff we made on like frequency deleted, shout out to them. Like, you know, they were real records, but they were like a mishmash of recordings and stuff. Like they were real first, at the time, but not quite adult. Yeah, I mean, mature, I just mean like yeah. it was like a compilation of songs we would record at other you know? Gotcha. It's like yeah. we just assembled a record. Because sure. we were like a like and there's nothing wrong with this term by the way. Like I'm I'm campaigning to stop disparaging this term, but we were a local band. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with local bands, and that is not like a derogatory term. Yes. Yeah. Um, but we were that. We were a local <laughs> band. So we would just like assemble songs and make the thing. And it would be the record, but it would be like a compilation. It would be from different studios. First record we ever made all at the same studio was with Randy LaBeouf, who is like on the same team as Will. Mm -hmm. So we were at that studio with Randy in 2016. It's all good nature audio? <laughs> yeah, uh, graphic nature. Graphic nature. Okay. Good nature. It's not good natured, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's graphic nature. And they like, so I did with, we did it with Randy. And then the next one, we went with Will, because we were like looking for a little bit, not that like Randy doesn't do metal, but like we just had like a different vision and Randy mm -hmm. was busy and we were just kind of like, oh, well, like Will was interested and we were yep. like, fuck yeah, like let's go with that. Yep. So we did in 2020, we did, well, 2019, that came out in 2020. Power Through Terror was the first one we did with Will. And uh, that was interesting to do because it was basically just me and Nico because mm -hmm. the band was like in a, you know, we're always like going through drummers. I don't Limbo, know. There's yeah. no drummer ever. So f whatever. That's fine. <laughs> oh, wow. um, but me and Nico were just kind of like the, the, that was it. Yeah. We were the nucleus of the band. There were other dudes in the band, but it was just me and Nico. Mm -hmm. And then uh, COVID hit. Like, right when we released it. I think, like, two weeks after. Beautiful timing. Such a sick time, yeah. COVID was, or 2020 is my first year being fully self-employed. So January Perfect. 1st, I'm like, like this is I'm it. I'm going to do it. it. I yeah. think I've got enough momentum to make this yep. work. And then, yeah, two months We later. did, like, a great tour, and then we <laughs> yep. released a record, and then, like, everything went fucking black. It feels like everyone in January 2020 was, was on a great Yeah, trajectory. we were like, let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, and our old, like, our old labels, like, was like, yeah, that record didn't really do very well. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like it does well streaming but it didn't sell a ton of physical and i'm like yeah, yeah. it's because yeah. we were trapped in our house um but we did that and then during the covid pandemic we did a pandemic ep like mm -hmm. everybody did and we did a, a ep called torture world yep which is like very metal and that was kind of us exercising our like metal demons i think and now we made this record tragedy of the commons with will and it's like the first recording that grayson's ever been on and the first recording that Tron was, has ever been on. And it like shows, I think it's mm -hmm. uh, different than anything we've ever done. But it's like a f more fully realized version of this thing. That's beautiful. In my head, because, you know, this is like my baby. I'm the only person who's been in it the whole time. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, I've taken it from being like a basically just like a hope conspiracy, like worship band was basically all it was to now like a fully realized thing that I think is something that I've always wanted it to be. Absolutely. Uh, uh, my curious curiosity there with Will is like, what does he do well? And so I'm always looking at other people, like other videographers, <laughs> other producers of like, we do very different jobs, but it is all kind of the same job. And I'm always curious of like, yeah, what makes him unique? What does he do so well that makes you go back to him? Of course, he's at the, the top of the universe production wise right yeah. now and he's doing great things for everyone. But yeah, what is something that you really like about him? What, what can I learn from him? What can um, I emulate in his I, work? I can't. I hope, I hope Will watches this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, you know, I'd, I'd say that Will, um, he, sees, he sees and he hears probably better than anyone I've ever worked with. And by that, I just mean like, he sees what you are very clearly. Interesting. And maybe that's not what you think you are, but he has a pretty good idea of what you are and the direction that would be the most beneficial to you. Does that mean that it's what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. That's up to you. Yeah. But for Will, you walk in and he can be like, you do this well. And you're like, well, I thought we did this thing well. And he's like, nope, you don't. You do this thing well. And you're like, oh, fuck. And you can choose to ignore him mm -hmm. or you can choose not to. That's not really his job or problem. Sure. But if you're smart, you paid to go to Will Putney. He you should listen. About. Yeah. That's always an interesting thing to me. And like in the music video equivalent, I have trouble with that same honesty because it's like I think in the studio there is always this like, yeah, kind of tough love that I think is always exuded of like it, that take wasn't good enough. Do another one. Kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. That's, and like, that's graphic nature. And from I the outside, you. that's always overwhelming. On the video set, it's always weird. Of like, I don't want to say that because I think in the next take, I'm going to see on your face of you being like, maybe. Fuck. But you know what? I think that Will does it really well, and Randy does it really well to know how to get something out of somebody. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily about telling them the truth all the time in such a brash way. Mm -hmm. It's more like, I'm going to tell you this thing in this way to make you see why I'm telling you this. Is that if that makes sense? You're kind yeah. of walking them through it. For me, it never is like that with them because I like Will is a close friend of mine. So he's just very much like he'll just be like, that sucked. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. Or he'll like the the most jarring thing I've ever experienced with recording with them was it started with Randy and it mm -hmm. happens with Will. Uh, they'll be like, those lyrics aren't good. And I'm like, cool. You know, like that was about this really personal thing that I, <laughs> wrote I a song about. Into the same and thing they're like, videos. and they're yeah. like, yeah, not good. Got to try again, do something different. And I'll be like, this is it. Like, this is what I wrote because I thought it was good. Now you want me to do another thing. It's like, this is my best. And you're saying do better. Right. <laughs> and that's like, the hardest part. Yeah. But like, I've figured out that it's not personal. Yeah. You know, don't take it personal. It's taken four recordings with them to like, be like, okay, you know, maybe I can do this. Better. Which is so hard because it is personal. That's why this whole thing right. works. Like if Vocals this are personal. Yeah. And I'm not saying that guitarists have it easier. I'm just saying like. You know, it's like that riff sucks. It's not like, not about your dad. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, or maybe it is, I guess, but yeah. no one knows that. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I wrote this song about something I experienced and I'm like, I thought it was good because I, I care about it. You know, I run into this issue with treatments all the time where someone will share a story about them. So like they want to tell this story from their life. And it's like, that's a traumatic thing. And I always struggle with how much do we depersonalize it? How much do we just say this is about a character and totally take you I out mean, of it? And how much do we lean into like, okay, so then on Wednesday, what happens? Yeah, I mean, to a degree, it's interesting because art can be so hyper personal and people can yeah. still relate to it. Yeah. Or you can really generalize it and people can relate to it. But I think that the point of art, partially, other than to express yourself, is to be related to. There's a reason that we make music under a band name. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't care about relating to anybody, I would just not name it. And I would just do it yeah. alone. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? And I would just, I put it just out. Do it in your bedroom. Kind like, of. Yeah. yeah. Or never put it out. Yeah. She'd be like, it's in my Dropbox. I made it because I wanted to make it. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we do. And anyone who tries to act like they don't care is a fucking liar. I appreciate Because, like, that, you yes. gave your yeah. band a name. Yeah. So that people could identify you clearly. Like, that's, that's an funny. act. Yeah. That's an, a, a purposeful act. I'd never simplify it to that degree, but you're 100% so right. So it's, like, yeah. it's like, okay, so if I were to be like, oh, I don't care, you know, if people relate to this, that's full of sh you're full of shit. I, I think there's a starving artist perspective there, or like a broken artist that we all like romanticize, and myself included here. And the example I always use is like, I always say that I like being on the other side of the camera, which is true. It was sure. kind of weird being on this side and getting used to it. But the flip side is, like, I wouldn't put everything I do on YouTube if I didn't want it to be seen. Like, as a music video director, it's like, I, I do like being behind the camera, but I'm kind of lying. Like, I wouldn't be here doing all this shit if I didn't want people to see yeah, this. Yeah, like, thing the most tortured yeah. artists of all time, like, release stuff. 
<laughs> That's why we know it. You then. know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. Slaughterhouse Five is called something. <laughs> yeah. Like Kurt Vonnegut wrote it. He didn't just burn it. Yeah. He obviously wanted to be related to. Yeah. You know, 100%. unless you find something posthumously and you're like, oh, this person wrote all this stuff. Now they're dead. And, and even here it is, you know, like maybe that could be a person who's truly like just artistic for the sake of being artistic. But bands aren't like that. We aren't like that. There's a reason we're doing this. There's, There's a reason, reason we're on stage. Here. Yeah. Because I want people to hear this thing. Yeah. Because I care about it. Right. Yeah. So there is like there is it is exceedingly personal, but equally has to be relatable. And that's a really helpful thing for a producer because everybody thinks their baby's cute. You know, <laughs> that's a beautiful but, analogy. But like, yeah. Will is like, your baby's ugly. You know, like, <laughs> we gotta that song to. sucks. Or like, you do this thing too many times. You know, now yeah. we've worked with Will so much that we can, we go into the studio with a little, we had Will in our ear anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, where like, we yeah. know what he's gonna say. Yeah. So like, I can be like, that part probably isn't good enough. You know, and, and Neeks hears it too. Mm -hmm. Nick will be like, eh. Neeks is a great producer, honestly. Nico is. He's stellar at it. He can be like, he hears a thing and he'll be like, mm. he's like, that should be half as long. And this, and he can like break it all apart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like Will would walk into the room and be, he would just say the same thing. Interesting. As Neeks. Interesting so, to like, yeah, learn his voice and be able to use that. Nico, to answer your original question, Will sees where you should be, but he also hears what you're trying to accomplish clearer than most. And so like he knows your identity and he hears where you're going musically and he gets involved. Like a producer essentially joins your band for like a month. That's, like I always Will never say, yeah. plays the songs. Will has, I don't think Will's, he has put a guitar on and like figured out a note or something to show Nico, mm -hmm. but he's never like, oh, give me that. And writes a guitar part for Great American Ghost. Yeah. Just like he doesn't like write vocal lines or melodies for Great American Ghost. But he and I sit in a room and he'll be like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, oh, I like that. And he's in the fucking band for like a month. Yep. And you can't do that if you don't like see and hear it yep. so clearly. And he does it. And dude, he does it like, again, I hope he doesn't watch this. I'm just <laughs> raving about him. Uh, he, he does it like at the drop of a hat too. He'll like, a band will show up yep. and it's like, goes from gag, boom, just straight from the bath to counterparts to this band. And it's like in the drop of a hat. And we're not the same band. Yeah. That's you know. one thing I really enjoy about my job is that idea of every month I'm in a new band and I get to kind of learn a new flavor of work. And I guess with Great American Ghost, then it's a different thing where it's like you've only known that flavor where you're like in the unique scenario where you've been doing this since like, yeah, when does Great American Ghost even start for you? If you're Ooh, the 20 founding member, I think. So, yeah, we're over a decade even pursuing yeah. this thing. And of course, it's changed a lot and grown a lot. But I think, yeah, that growth there is beautiful and also a. Yeah, just a rare thing to see someone go through and endure in one band and one name. Yeah, it can be a hindrance. I mean, I definitely don't do this anymore. But I think that like holding on to something that you have had for so long, whereas other people don't have that. Like Grayson and Tron have only been in the band for like a year. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like, you know, like this is just a new thing for me. So we should do this. And I, and I can, in my head, I'm like, this is not what this is. But mm -hmm. It's I think, everybody's. I think that new energy is also so valuable to have just someone Absolutely. who's new and excited and doing this kind of for the first time, getting to see it all. You get to yeah, show them Australia for the first time and all yeah. like the, the little nuances there that kind of reminds you of like how special this thing is. Where it's also, it's so interesting to get like an outside perspective of something when you've yeah. been inside of it for so long. Sure. Kind of to your point. It's like Tron had like an, a, a perspective that I tried to like, I tried to ask him at the beginning as much as I could because now he's in it. Mm -hmm. So. He doesn't fucking know. <laughs> but like at first I was like, do you think gag from your perspective is, is this a thing gag would do or uh, I, you know, whatever. And he'd be like, Oh, from my, when I was just a fan of the band, I saw it like this. Yeah. And maybe I didn't listen to him, but I was it's like, helpful to it's know. interesting to know. Yeah. Uh, I know it's also the first album through sharp tone. So we've put out other records through other record labels, but this feels like a, a big step forward. Does it like, feel different do you feel the machine behind you is there more pressure now that there's the big name attached to it or is it something that you've been through enough times you kind of know of like yeah this is the anxious stressful part and then it's going to come out and life will be okay again it's both okay i you know it's crazy i will say this and i'm not kissing their ass because they're like giving me my, they're funding me right now but like sharp tone is like objectively um the most active label we've ever been involved that's with. awesome like i just talk to Jackie and Sean like a lot and that's not something we're used to 
a lot of times. Who are Jackie and Sean? Sorry, I think I recognize Sean. Sean is the owner, and Jackie is basically like the GM. She okay. kind of like does the. She handles the day to day and everything. And Sean is also extremely involved, and he owns. Sharp tone. Started it. I feel like these are all yeah. People I would have emailed in my photo past days oh, yeah, of like, of please, course. can I have Absolutely. a pass to such and such? Absolutely. But, yeah. yeah. If you've uh, talked to Currents, I mean, they know. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. and and just to be a part of it, uh, it's it's uh it's interesting because like our old label, I have no problems with, but we just had a different relationship with. Our yeah. relationship with them was like, this is how much money we're getting for this thing, and they would just hand it, it over yeah. and be like. Okay, go do that. And I'd hear nothing, like no input, really. That's crazy. And not in like a negative way, but just literally like they were just like, oh, do your thing, mm -hmm. you know? And that's one of my, pet, sorry, I'm interrupting you. My no, pet peeve there is bands always be like, oh, here's the budget you figured out. And it's like, no, 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 no. Right. Like, this thing works better if we're both on the team it's figuring funny, this out. Perspective is valuable because at the time I was like, oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll just do it all myself. But now seeing it from a different perspective with Sharp Tone, it's like, Jackie is very involved and has like an opinion about stuff and mm -hmm. I value it yeah. because she's just a machine and like Sean you know, is a machine. Yeah. It's like yep. those people are just so on it yep. that it's like, I think you should do this. And I, they're, they're a, a, they are a group of people that cause me to pause because I am so bullheaded. Like I can be so okay. shark like where yeah. I'm like forward movement all the time. Like, no, no sidetrack. I'm like, this is what we're doing and this mm -hmm. is how I'm going to do it. But it's valuable to have like somebody like, you know, Sean or Jackie to just step in and be like, I think we should do it like this. And then I can be like, okay. And Was I it? trust what they do because they've had success and I'm just like, cool. Okay, let's do it. So that machine is there. So I feel it. But alternatively, I know this, this move and it's like this time leading up to the first single is really stressful. Yeah. And then the rollout is cool, right? There's nothing better than New Music Day. New Music Day is the best day a band dude has. Mm -hmm. Like, you can ask any dude that's in a band. That's Christmas, yeah. It's Christmas. Yeah. It's like, here's the thing. And then, you dude, you're getting Instagram stories? Who, baby. You yeah. know? You're getting tagged in some Instagram stories, you yeah. know? Maybe the guy from fucking Gojira, you know, <laughs> shares it. You're like, yo, yeah. this dude did that thing. Yep. That never happened to me. You finally, no, I'm just yeah. I think it might have happened to me. <laughs> but I think I'm, I think I'm pulling that from personal experience. Hell but yes. yeah, it's like... Oh, you screenshot it, you send it to your band. Mm -hmm. That's a fucking cool day. Yeah. And then the next day, you feel empty again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like every other musician. Yes. And then the cycle starts all back over it does. again. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's next eight video. Of hard work. Yeah, let's yeah. go. I got another video to go. So yeah. Yeah, you feel both, but I'm like pretty familiar with it. You uh you mentioned welcoming the sharp tone team into it after being kind of yeah, independent and strong willed, and I relate with that very much. Right? I think yeah. I, yeah, I appreciate my own autonomy and I think to some degree I like put money in my own autonomy of like, I, I think I've gotten this far by being bullheaded and to start taking in voices. Now it's like definitely feedback is good. I don't want to be ignorant to feedback. Sure. But also it's like, I got me this far. I will get me to the next step as well. Dude. Uh, I mean, <sighs> was it tough then to like let them in and like open those doors a little bit and be like, eh, not really? Uh -huh. I don't think because they, they are just like so much. So that thing yeah. that it wasn't that tough. They're such experts in what they do. Yeah. But, yeah. That I was like, okay. You know, I just kind of heard them right away. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy because being a creative is like truly betting on yourself, right? And like how many people can tell you you suck and that you're mm -hmm. never going to do it mm -hmm. before you believe them? Yeah. And it's literally just a matter of ignoring all those people yeah. or making a list in your head <laughs> of all of them. <laughs> we both so got that a little you can reference of them either, yeah. again when you're like succeeding and you're like, <laughs> fucking guy i'm big thing. on like fake villains I'm like i don't even think the people oh, that yeah. i use the chip on my shoulder actually have a problem with me i think i just sure. somewhere along the way All decided day. that was the guy i'm yeah, gonna yeah, prove yeah. wrong yeah. yeah fuck that person that guy is yeah. Still, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. that guy no the chip on your sh dude how many times have you been told that you're you're dead you're yeah. done yeah you're cooked band shot people throw this shit around all the time yeah it's a crazy thing to be like to just write we always joke about this in the studio we have like a joke where after we do a thing We'll be agonizing over this part. And it's like a word or like a note that I'm mm -hmm. hitting or like some other shit. Who cares? Yep. Or the, you know, it's always the words before the breakdown that take the fucking longest to write. Yep. And so you write them and you get them done and you scream them or sing them or whatever. And then afterwards, we always like joke. We're like, <laughs> we're like, this took an hour and 45 minutes to write five words. And some kid's going to fucking comment and be like, this sucks. And then move on with his life and not care at all. Yep. That, that, that exchange is why 
musicians are absolutely unwell. Like that's why we're crazy. <laughs> yep. Because it's like yep. you can pour everything into something and someone can blow you off in like a fucking heartbeat. My favorite version of this, the uh, first video I ever did was like a guitar playthrough and we did it on like a, a pier, like a beach type shit. Uh, and we're out there and we do the whole thing and it all goes well, whatever, life goes good. The only comment on the whole video is that the guitar wasn't plugged in. <laughs> and it was when I was like, yeah, Obviously it's not who plugged cares? In, dude. It's right. not even the real audio. It's a, yeah, yeah. no one's saying it was plugged in. And it really struck me. It's like, yeah, obviously it was a very formative moment for me. It's like the first video, the first time I'm doing this thing with a band, the first time the band had trusted me to do it. And yeah, it all felt big and cool. And then to get that one comment was a very like real like, oh, this is this cool. is how this whole game is played. And you can either t you can either take that comment and completely ignore it. I'll pl I plug in guitars now. I'll tell or you what. <laughs> I put the guitar in the back cable now. You can <laughs> either the back pocket, yeah, yeah, you can either plug it in. <laughs> you can you can take the comment as like as something that hurts you. Yeah. Or you can understand that the, the internet's not real. It took me the, by there was obviously a moment of being butthurt as a, whatever eighteen year old kid being like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, right. And then th th pretty quickly I realized of like. Man, if that's all they complained about, then I did a great job here. Like, if they got through all the video and the only thing that they were mad about was whether the guitar was plugged in, that yep. means that everything was good. Everything was lit well. It was in focus. Like, yeah. life was good. The pace was good. It wasn't boring. Like, yeah, if they made it that far to have that comment, then like, okay, fine. Yep. You made it through the first 10 checkpoints. I'm not going to hit everything perfectly. No. So, and, it's, yeah. and, and perfect doesn't exist, A. And B, we've yeah. created, like, a culture on the internet where there's, like, zero accountability, right? There's yeah. no accountability at all. Yeah. So someone can just say something really awful to you <clears throat> with nothing to lose. Yep. There's nothing to lose. You're just some random person on YouTube. You're yeah. never going to meet that person. Yeah. You're never going to do it. I wouldn't know if I did. Right. Because they're, they're probably going to very polite to you. To you. I'm sure there's been negative comments about Great American Ghost that, who've also come to the merch table and told you they were sure. the best out of the night. Like, I wouldn't know because I don't <laughs> yeah. read the comments because I have a Wise. therapist. Wise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There's no fucking way. <laughs> that is just the worst. That's a bad. I remember once I... um. I re released something mm -hmm. and I, a, f a co worker sent me a comment. I did not read the comment because I'm knew not better. that stupid. Yeah. Um, but I read it's, the comment was like, I've, I've been straight edge since I was, I've, I, I've been straight edge since I was, you know, 14, 15. I have no fucking clue. Sure. But I've been straight edge for a long time. Most of your life. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Majority of my <laughs> life, 20 years. And uh, so I've never drank, I've never drank anything. I've never drank. I mean, I've drank like water, but like I've never drank like Hopefully, yeah. alcohol, never done drugs. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never done any of that ever. And uh, there was a comment and it said, um, it said like, Ethan's straight edge. I saw him piss his pants at a party in <laughs> Hudson, New Hampshire when he was 18. Totally, totally fabricated. Like that didn't happen. No clue what that's about. And a coworker <laughs> said to me, I was like, dude, what is this person with any luck, that comment will be under every video you release I hope for the from rest now of on. time. Well, the, my coworker d leaves it under every comment now. <laughs> but it's just, it's, I was like, so that funny. is cursed. <laughs> like, if somebody can just fully make up something, that's, you know that the internet is, an, is a truly dangerous place. I would give anything for the other side of that story of like, I, who does do he they, think is I there am? some other guy named Ethan? Some guy with they... bushy hair. Because when I was 18, my hair was over my eyes. Sure, there's there's a lot of people that look like me. That's what I'm saying. A lot of dudes in Chiodo shirts and like really tight black jeans and big shoes. I like, I don't know why. The big Osiris really shoes? Big o no, yeah. no, oh, no. Sorry. Never. Sorry. Don't, you do, don't you do that to me. No, it was like big... Uh, They'd be like big running shoes, mm -hmm. you know, but the jeans were so tight. Yep. It made you look like a clown. Yep. Yeah. Literally <laughs> and a, figuratively. A whole era. I'm sure there were a lot of them yeah. who got drunk and There's pissed themselves at a party. There's a whole festival in Vegas and, of them right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We're celebrating it as we yeah. speak. I'm sure someone else that looked just like me did that, but it wasn't me. Or it is just truly, he just was like, what is the... Fabricated. Yeah. Thing. And like, that's also a crazy, that's like, cool. how did you do, like, what was the first draft of that? Where did you, like... <laughs> Honestly... Where, I respect that. Yeah. If that were what it was, if they just made that up and they're like, I know Ethan well enough to know he's been straight edge for All 20 years, he's good but I'm going to make this up right yeah. now and just start typing. That's cool. That's so funny. What a, yeah, I hope I see that comment more often. Go find but it. It's not that hard to find. I apologize. Yeah. yeah, no, it's fine. I, I Don't send it to me. With just any luck, it'll pop up on this video. Yeah. I had to tell my coworker, I was like, hey man, this is funny, but don't ever do that again. Because yeah. it's like, it gets slippery. Not very something fast. I want. <laughs> Are you able to like stop and smell the roses then? Where I think the trouble with comments no. is yes, there is so much no. of this. Okay. No. How do you make peace with that? Or this is a ch challenge I run into where it's like, yeah, the thing comes out. I'm already on to the no next peace. thing. Life goes on. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. That is not no sustainable. 
No. For myself, and I'm talking about myself as well here. Where it's like I need to get better at like stopping and being like, oh, I did do a good thing. Oh, that that record is good. Oh, whatever. This it is good that I sold out this show or played this show. Not that I've sold out a show, but um, is there a moment where you're able to like take a deep breath and be like, damn, it is cool that I made it to Sydney or that no. these German people know my name at least. Nope. It's all just <laughs> fuck. How do I get better? <laughs> yeah. 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 My Which girlfriend. Is, my girlfriend's sitting off camera and she. <laughs> There is no it's off brutal. camera. We're in the castle. Yeah, you're right. She's yeah, she's outside the castle. That's true, and she knows that this is true. It's yeah. fucking brutal. Yeah, I can only imagine being with me as a fucking nightmare. Um, yeah, no, it's like it's shark behavior. It's yeah. literally forward always. Like if I stop, I die. Which I think is that the only is way it. to survive this industry. I think like it, is it sucks. Too easy to get complacent. And <laughs> it not is the that, only but. way to have done it for as long as I've done it. Yeah. I yeah. think I don't actually think that's true. I think there are people. I don't know. I I know for a fact there are other people that feel the way I feel. Definitely, which is like something I would speak to mm -hmm. um, if anyone wanted to hear it. Like that's a point I made earlier as like a joke, but it's true. Like music release day is the best day in the world. The worst day in the world to be in a band is the next day. You know, because like your self worth in some way, and I've worked on this exponentially through mm -hmm. like therapy, but like your self-worth is reliant on what you create. Like 100%. what you create is you and it is your value. Mm -hmm. So like day after release is like, it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. It's like, it, I just did the thing. The thing I've been working towards just happened now. What are we doing? I, I assume there's a similar thing with videos where it's also that like you've built like by, by release day, this thing is a year old. Like it is, yeah. it has been yeah. in your system for so long. No, whatever I, you. Hey. I know. Yeah, no, I feel it, dude. <laughs> and whatever you've built up in that internally over the course of that year is like better than whatever that day could be. Like you've almost sure. fantasized this day that even when release day comes, it's like short of Gojira being like, come direct yeah, support yeah. for us right, right now. Yeah. It's like come play in France anything with us. short of that is, yeah, underwhelming. But almost. even that, I don't want to sound ungrateful because I am, I am very grateful. Of course. Extremely grateful to anyone who's ever come up to me and said something to me to anybody who cares enough to even listen to it. Yeah. Like, at all. It's insane. It's insane to me that we have X amount of Spotify listeners a, a month. That's yeah. nuts. But momentary. That feeling is very fleeting. Mm -hmm. The next feeling immediately after and all the way through until the next time I have, like, one split second to kind of, like, feel the feeling. Yeah. Um. It's like, how do I, how do I make this more or better? It's like we play a, a beautiful show in on the, we were just on tour of the ghost inside and we played this beautiful show in Worcester and, and like my friends were there and like all the people I loved were there, people that I hadn't seen in years and blah, blah, blah. We played this great set and it was just amazing. And that night was definitely like a wild feeling, mm -hmm. you know, to be there and to have that. And then, like, the next day, it's like, well, when, how can I headline that room? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think there's a lot of musicians that feel like that. 100%, yeah. I feel like if, if you don't feel like that. Um, it's not working. I don't know if it's not working. I guess, you know, there might be some people who are completely at peace. But if you do have that, I'd, I'd be interested to know how. I, uh, I feel similarly to you in the context of, like, yeah, it's never enough. And the next day is always, okay, how do I reach the next milestone here? And the reason that it's, like, kept me up at night is the, the Last Dance documentary that came out with Michael Jordan. Sure. Uh, and I remember just – what I really took away from that was how depressed he seemed at this point in his life. Yeah. Where it's, like, he's done everything. He's beaten everyone. He's right. done everything. And he's still now 55 going, like – or 65, whatever, how old he is. Going, like, fuck. Like, I'm, this isn't good enough anymore. And yeah, it's being like, I love gambling. Yeah, and I think to me the gambling <laughs> is just him trying to like win He can't more. stop. He no, can't, I know. And it's that a desire to compete that is in, insatiable. And to me it's like if that is the best case scenario here, right, is to be the Michael Jordan of the thing, but if that thing still, you can still get to that, that mountaintop and still be empty and unhappy, then it's like, all right, I need to reevaluate my path up this mountain here. I think the way, I think the, the, like, the one thing that I will say is that I found is like, this is also tough, and it's a, it's a work in progress every day. Yeah. But, like, moments of happiness that are outside of music, I've learned to, like, experience in the moment. Yeah. And disconnecting those things is, is, was an invaluable That's huge. thing yeah. to understand. Because... Having some life outside of the band. Uh, yeah, and it's, yeah. Like, and it's like, I can go and have this, like, beautiful moment or time or whatever... You know, like I can go to a friend's wedding, 
and enjoy it with my most of a friend's wedding. But. Most, of a, hey, <laughs> yo, don't you rat me out, brother? No, I can you know I can celebrate a friend yeah. at a wedding with the person. I'll cut that part too. You're no, good. you can keep it in. I don't know. Uh, if he watches this, he deserves to know. Um, I can go with like the person I care about the most in the world, and then like I can enjoy that time. Yeah. And I can honestly say that at no point, oh, that's not true. I got a call about Australia during the wedding. But mm -hmm. I, outside of that call, most yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm here. This is beautiful. I'm happy. My friend is happy. I'm feeling good. And I'm with this person I care about. And I've been trying to nice. work on that but more. But yeah. before, I can honestly tell you that they were not disconnected at all. Like, they were intertwined at all times. Mm -hmm. I would have been thinking at that wedding the whole time about Lost in the Outline coming out. Yep. And what needs to get done? What needs to get done. Yeah. Now, I, I've worked really hard to separate that. I'm working on that as well. We're, yeah, I've, uh, I've gotten into golf this summer as a hobby. Nice. And to me, it's like, I don't really care about golf. It was important to me just to have something that I went and did that wasn't this, that wasn't photo, that wasn't video, that wasn't sure. editing, it wasn't creating. And it was, felt like a huge like, life step for me to be like, oh, I can, I can have an hour a week that is not committed to this other goal yeah. that I've committed no, all I, of me to. Yeah, I, 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 I have that. Yeah, I feel you. It's, it's, it's like, like a very like new thing that I'm kind of here described as a wedding is like a, yeah, not that wedding golf are quite equivalent, but it's the same idea of like, I was able to be somewhere and just enjoy that thing and not worry about, okay, what else? What's next? Where yeah. Am I, going tomorrow? I mean, like, this is what I am. Yeah. You know? And like, again, luckily I'm, I'm like with a partner that like understands that this is like who I am and what I am. And that's a thing I think that like they care about, mm -hmm. like about me. Yeah. It's just this, but this is just what I am. Mm hmm and I don't know if I could change that. I don't have yeah. hobbies. Yep. Like, this is it. You know? So I always say to Jackie on the phone, like, when we're, I'm on the phone with Jackie from Sharptone, I'll be like, I'm doing the XYZ for this reason and this video because this is all I think about all the time. And she, like, laughs. And she's like, I know. <laughs> you know? It's like, because yeah. it's, it's true. You like, it's, yeah. it's brutal. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to be any other way. So... It's all you can be. I'm not, I don't know, I don't know if I'll ever be like satisfied with this and what we've done and what we've accomplished, but I do know that it's one day I'll be at peace with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not right now. Yeah. You know, but like I this think, record isn't the last gag record. Yeah. And it's definitely built to be a stepping stone to the next gag record, to the next gag record. Like, mm -hmm. There is no stopping. My iteration of this is like, at least I'll know that I did everything I could have done. And I think that's, there's a lot, like a huge what if thing that I think eats a lot of people. And I think what I'm hearing you say and what I think I like to live, yeah, practice my own business on is like, I don't have that what if. Whatever that what if, if I, what if I had done more? It's like, that doesn't exist because I know that I am doing every ounce of what I could do. I also like, I, you know, philosophically, like, I don't believe in a higher power and I don't believe in an afterlife. So sure. this is it. So like, what's the point of doing anything if you're not doing it intensely? Hmm. What the fuck is the point? Yeah. You know, like you're just going to die someday. Hmm. You're just going to be dirt and hmm. everything's going to be black. Well, you're not even going to have a consciousness to understand black. Right. Yeah. So it's like, if this is it, you're never going to be as young as you are right now. Sure. You'll never do this again. I'll never be on stage at 35 with my friends who were in a bus accident that I care about immensely with all the people I love and people I grew up with, you know, that'll never be again. Yeah. So like that's important. And I do have to keep that in mind. And I try, but the next thing is what matters. Yep. Um, the next thing is what matters. I want to chat about the last thing for a second here. Uh, the Forsaken music video came out, uh, and I loved this pair of music videos. It was Forsaken and Hymn of the Decay. Yeah. Uh, both of them were done with Anthony Altamura, uh, who I'll also pick your brain about, about what he did well. Sure. Uh, I want to start with the Forsaken video, though. It, where was the location there? Where The fire dude. is like, uh, fire dude. is always cool. Dude. But that location at the edge of the earth is what it looked like to okay. me, and it seemed like the coolest place and the rare, unique landscape, where we've seen so many forests and parking lots and rooftops yeah it felt like a unique place that i hadn't seen a band before and it was refreshing in that way new hampshire beautiful okay <laughs> i guess cape cod because it seemed like it just that's had fair the... no new hampshire forever okay i love new hampshire i love manchester both of them forever uh no you know honestly i i put a facebook status out and i said i need a place to shoot guns i don't shoot guns like i don't that's an interesting. Sifting. I'm like anti. Yeah. I'm not anti-gun, 
because I do believe that like a proletariat should have a wealth of arms in case they need to overthrow an oppressive system. Sure. But I am not pro-gun in the way that Americans are pro-gun. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So me posting on Facebook that I need a place to shoot guns <laughs> is fucking crazy. Yep. And then I was like, you know, private message me or whatever. And I got a message from this kid named Cody, who I've known for a long time. And he was like, oh, you can come shoot guns on my quarry slash like rock thing slash like uh, they do like heavy machinery, but they have to park it somewhere. And he's like, come look at it. And I was like, I messaged him back. And I was like, actually, like, this is a music video. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, fuck yeah, like, let's do that. How and did you get the idea of, like, the shooting guns is a great way to find a space that is, like, big and remote and safe? Because I'm from New Hampshire. And he, that was just like how, what, what made you think that that was going to, like. Because I know yeah. where people shoot guns. That's very smart. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very smart. Yeah. So I was like, all right, what, okay. So also I knew there was pyro. Got gotcha. right? you, okay. And in, in, in Connecticut, in Massachusetts, in Jersey, that video is 25 grand. Easy. Yeah. That video was not 25 grand. With all the grand. permits. In New Hampshire, shit, yeah. not 25 grand. <laughs> Dude, I was like, we have to do this in New Hampshire because I can't pay that much money. Yeah. But I knew it was going to be pyro because I just felt like that was what that video called for. That was the treatment I had. Yep. And I was like, I was like, all right, what are we going to do? And I was like, New Hampshire, live free or fucking die. So I just, I knew, I was like, where can I shoot guns? And I knew that normally translated to not giving a fuck about gotcha. what goes gotcha. on at all. Yeah. yeah. And then I hit the kid with, I was like, Cody, I was like, I hit him with like, hey, this is what I have planned and this is what we need. And he was like, oh yeah, no worries. So then we get there and the dude that owns the land is there in the morning and He's like, hey, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. He's really nice. And he was just like, yeah. So this was the fucking wildest thing. He goes, so the cat just had an outburst. Oh. So, so <laughs> apologies. No, it's fine. So uh, he's like, I get there and the guy goes, he goes, so I called the cops, you know, and told them just not to bother to come. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I've been a degenerate. For for a long time. And if I knew I could just call the cops and tell them not to bother, <laughs> I would have tried that. But like this dude literally just like, oh yeah, I called the cops and told them not to worry about it. So they never came ever. That's so New Hampshire. There's no permits at all for that video. It just <laughs> happened. And um, I'm glad I didn't use the kid's last name because I, I don't think this will get him in trouble. But like yeah. no permits. Cops never showed up. He was like, you have till 10. Which is nuts. Yeah. We shot it all fucking day. We yeah. started like eight in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was just that. I just was like, I need a place to shoot guns, <laughs> which translated instantly to be like, I need somewhere to shoot pyro. And the kid was like, yeah, whatever. It's and that hurt. was it. And then we just shot fire off all day, pyro, and no one cared. <laughs> what a day. New Hampshire, dude. <laughs> so then, New okay. So yeah. then there's this point in the video where we're in this, like, it's hard to describe, but like, um, we're in a quarry mm -hmm. essentially, and there's like dirty water behind us that had like gasoline in it. And uh, we're there, and it's really hard to like gasoline, by the way, just so everyone knows. It wasn't super unsafe. It's really hard to like gasoline. The, the <laughs> like the temperature of a fire to light gasoline is extremely high. Cool. So the, okay. the, the pyro wasn't like at risk of setting us ablaze, which actually would have been sick. Would have looked cool. if that whole yeah. lake of water was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so we're in this quarry. Might need a permit by that point. <laughs> yeah. So we're in this quarry, we get it all set up. And we're ready to do shoots for the first shot. And we're out there. I'm in a fucking bulletproof vest. And I have makeup on. It is 100 degrees. It was oppressively hot. Yeah. So we're out there. And we all are ready to shoot. And we got it all worked out. Blah, 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 blah. And Anthony is about to, like, hit play. And before he gets to the playback, up on the quarry, all these people start gathering up on the quarry okay. in their trucks and they're sitting in the beds of their trucks and they're just drinking beer at like New eight Hampshire, in the fucking yeah, morning. The and I'm like, are they fucking serious? And, and it's like it, it, for people who are in bands, like, you know, this shooting music video is inherently embarrassing because it's like, it's stupid. It's like, we're playing dress up. All it's day. like a movie. It's like, it, yeah. okay. If I describe a movie plot to you, it will sound dumb. 
no matter what it is. I like, have trouble watching movies because I can't get past the idea that it's just two grown ups playing dress up. Well, that's why I don't think horror movies are scary because I'm like, there's a fucking catering table. I know <laughs> it's over there. You know, it's just off camera. Yeah. But if you explain any any movie, yeah. like a guy finds a drone in a cornfield and he brings it home and then he takes it to NASA and they shoot him into space and then he finds uh, the solution to gravity. Mm -hmm. That is Interstellar. One of the best movies ever made. Yeah. But when you explain it out loud, it sounds stupid. That Definitely, is exactly yeah. how music videos feel. Yep. You're like, we're in a pit and there's <laughs> fire. That will look cool. Yep. But you are embarrassing yourself for yeah. like eight hours. It's also one of those where like the fire looks cool in camera, but it's not like it's 50 foot pyro. No, <laughs> like, it's like Amazon. We bought those on yeah. Amazon. Dude. Yeah. And so uh, they're all sitting up there. And then, as you know, for videos, we're not really playing the song. Spoiler. Uh so it's on a PA. So now a song of ours is just playing super loud with a click in it. So it's like, doo, 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 doo. and there's a woman mm -hmm. who's like, one, two, three, <laughs> over. And then, we, and then we pretend to play the song. Yeah. So now there's like 50 <laughs> like New Hampshireans up there. And just they have the coolers. Event there's a town. bunch of fucking four wheelers. And I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. So then we pretend to play Forsaken. In a fucking hole. Over. With a, and over, over and over. And but over. after the first one, it was brutal. It was 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. So we're going crazy. And then it like ends and we're all like fucked. And then these people are like, <laughs> yeah. Like, cry, like, and I'm like, fuck, this sucks. And they stay there all day. They were there all day. But I will say that's the most New Hampshire thing ever. Alternatively, the most New Hampshire thing ever is that those people helped with the video. In this like beautiful way. Mm -hmm. It was just like this fucking kid ran the pyro all day. I have never met him. <laughs> he did not work for, for Dragon Neck. He didn't work for us. I don't know who that kid was. He just ran pyro all day. He didn't know the song. He had never heard the band. He was just like, he's like, as the day progressed, he's like, oh, cool. This is the part where pyro <laughs> happens. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, cool. So like bum 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 bam. He'd hit the <laughs> button and he'd like look at me and be like, no idea who that person was. He was one of the four wheeler people. <laughs> and then we would the like most move, New we, day I know. We'd move sets and uh, everyone would come down and move the set. It's and then so they'd go funny. back on it. It was fucking nuts. I've like I always say this. I've toured my whole adult life. People in New England are not nice. They're kind. It's different. Right? People in other places in the country where who I will not state <laughs> are not nice or they're not kind, they're nice. Yeah. Like they can be like friendly, yep. but it's not like, you know, they don't really care. My sister recently moved to Chicago in the last couple of years and has that had that Midwest like niceness. And it's exactly that where it's like yeah. people like give us cookies when we move in, but like they also won't help us move the couch kind of thing. <laughs> so it's right. like there's this weird like I think that Chicago has it. Yeah. I think they got the I think they got the juice. Yeah. But there are other places in the world that just don't. Yeah. And so growing up in New England, you're like, the description of New England is like, you could, like, you're in a, a train and someone will tell you to go fuck yourself, mm -hmm. like, to your face. But if you fell on the tracks, that same person would jump down and help you. Yeah. That's New England. Interesting. And that, like was, that. that was my experience that day. It was like, oh, these people need help. Do, do, do. Just fucking walked out. Where do you need this barrel <laughs> filled with like fire and we were like oh over there and the guy's like okay walked it over and he's like all right see you. and then he'd go up and just sit on his were these like quarry workers you have a sense like they got no. called in because no. their boss i think cool we happened? were so maybe possible but we were also so loud that yeah. i think we just there were like houses around we were so the the music was so loud or, yeah. so you have to hear it over the pyro and like you have to hear the count in so it's got to be really loud yep and so uh, it was really really loud <laughs> So I think people just started gathering around. And for them, like, that is not an accessible shoot to walk up where you guys are covered in blood. You're in bulletproof Crazy. vest. It's like, but they don't care. No. Nope. I guess, yeah, maybe they not the care. weirdest thing. But. I have a head tattoo, and I was covered in blood. Yeah. And people were like, hey, man, this song's cool. Just don't care. No fear. I wonder if any of them called the cops, and the cops said, hey, we were told not to worry <laughs> oh, no. about it. Yeah, no, yeah. don't worry. Nothing's going on over there. We got told. <laughs> they told us it was fine. Maybe. So it's probably fine. We played, okay, so the night, like the video crosses over into night. That was at like 10 at night. Mm -hmm. So it was, and it was loud. And also, just for the record, the click yep. is the loudest thing. It pierces. And dude, it was like, beep, boop, 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 beep. 
and it was bouncing off the walls and the like the houses. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we're going to jail. Yeah. Because this is the worst thing. It's crazy. Like hearing my voice all the time, jarring, yes. But like I, I would have been more infuriated by that like crazy yes. clicking. Everything else you can day. kind of ignore. And the click is the one piece that just goes right through your soul. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> no matter what. But yeah, that was that shoot. I don't remember Jesus. what the original question was, but <laughs> that's that one. Uh, the one last video, or actually, uh, Him of the Decay came out. Uh, I know there's like the old man in that video. Um, I want to, uh, I want to get into the British mom thing before we get here. So right about at our hour, uh, so I won't keep you too long for it. Uh, but I don't care. I drove here. <laughs> Let's get it, dude. I'm I appreciate here. it. Um, so yes, uh, I guess might as well over here then. So the Him of the Decay video also comes out. Uh, there's like an old man covered in like like concrete, like corn flour. Flat, corn flour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I assume that, obviously it was an actor. Uh, was that also a treatment that you would written? Are you also kind of the mastermind of how that came together? I write. Yeah, I read all of them, Beautiful. all the treatments, which I don't think is like a badge of honor. I think I'm just that controlling. I prefer <laughs> I as a director. And I, yeah, maybe Anthony would have a different two cents, but it's like I like for you to come to me with uh, an almost finished thing. And then I go, OK, how do we make this better using what I know about how that's really this it. Thing works. That's how we do yeah. a dragon neck because yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine asking someone else to write my treatment. And yes. that's not an insult to anybody who yeah. does it. If you do that, that's great. I'm the same way. I, don't, I feel but like I'm prescribing a treatment. And I it wrote the song. That's always my thing. How the hell are you supposed to know what I think or th- what You're I see? You're the expert. You know where this thing came from. You know where it wants to go. Like, yeah, yeah learn it, about it's this. It's interesting because yeah. I always do this thing where like they'll be like, uh, we need a music video for this thing. Mm-hmm. We think Lost in the Outline is the single. That's like record labels tell you what they think the single will be. Which you should listen to because you're they're normally right, they know, yeah. So, um, except for in like the famous cases of like you know, the guy at Sire Records thinking the Blitzkrieg bops sucked, you're like, that dude was wrong. But there's a million other times where, yeah, he was some guy was like, you should do this, you mm-hmm. know, like this is the single Rock the Casbah is the single, and the Clash is like, okay, yeah, and they're right, yeah. So, uh, they were like, we think you know, Lost in the Island single, and then I have to make a I just make a video thing for it. So I just read the lyrics and then I think about what I was thinking and then I just make up a thing. Yeah. And every time I go to sit down to do it, I'm like, how the fuck am I going to make up a video? And then I just do it and I'm like, oh, I guess like that. <laughs> it's all pretty easy because yeah. you're just looking cool. Yep. Like 80% of a video is just like standing there and looking yep. tortured. Yep. So it's just a lot of that. You also In my notes you can, app of you can me make just anything being like, look cool. It's like, yeah. You, yeah. We want a good direction, but it's like, yeah, um, Anthony is good enough at his job that he can yeah. come in and like whatever you give him is going to look cool. Like, just make they, the the guys in the video wet and yeah. you're fine. Most <laughs> yeah, wet the floor of the people. Yeah, <laughs> life's good. Yeah, yeah, just like wet Nico's hair and yep. Grayson's hair and Tron's hair. Yep. And I have a head tat. I'm like, okay. they got enough hair for the cover. Sure. You. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, halfway done here. <laughs> um, but yeah, we uh, the Him of Decay video. I like. I know. So that song is about dementia. It was originally called Dementia War, and now it's called Him of Decay. Uh, because Hymn of Decay is a better name. It is. Yeah. Um, so that song is about dementia. Um, my father has dementia. And uh, it's a struggle. It sucks. And it's like, it's a it's crazy yeah. thing to witness. Yeah. So that song is about that. And uh, so in the video, I had this idea for the video from the moment we wrote it. I also knew it was going to be a single the moment we wrote it. So it wasn't hard to write that one. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Uh, it just kind of like clicked and made sense that it's just like, we also try and keep our videos like not like overly simple, but it's like, I feel like this is just what I like is like seeing a band play the song, even though they're not playing it, it's fake. And then seeing a simple story that can be like relayed in three minutes. How much can I care about a thing in three minutes and 30 seconds? Yeah. It's pretty tough. Yep. So, you know, like old man, dementia, He's covered in corn flour, which just makes him look crazy mm-hmm. because he's supposed to be like the he's supposed to be the personification of the feeling. And then like there are mirrors, which is like kind of a play on like what people with dementia experience. And there are clocks and metronomes and things. And those are like dementia. Um, those are just like experiences people with dementia have had or have. Mm-hmm. Um, that was kind of it. And then Dragon Neck just like takes it and kind of runs with it and he's like well this is what's possible this is what we should do here and uh i really love working with dragon neck he's very like he's just so open to anything and he's like one of those people eric richter is another person who we've worked with a bunch and i love and i love dragon neck in the same way where like if you're like hey 
I don't see it like this. I see it kind of like this. They're like, oh, okay, what is it? Not like, hey, fuck off. You know, like, because that's not yeah. cool. But yeah. they're like psyched when you just like give them any feedback. They're mm-hmm. like, I want that. And then like, you know, Neck does this and Eric Richter does this where they call you over to the, to the screen and they're like, what do you think of this? And like, what do we do here? How do you want to move that? And that's really awesome to be involved in. I'm sure there are people that don't want to be involved at all. Um, but I think we've covered this at length. <laughs> I can't not be. So yeah. I just like yeah. am involved. Nico's also super involved with that stuff. Like Nico's watching these things and, and has like direct input on every like visual that gag makes. All of us do, but Neeks is very involved there. Awesome. We all kind of have our niches, niches where it's like, you know, Tron is like very into the production world so he can do pre-pro for us and demoing and live. And then like Grayson is such an amazing songwriter that like he just loves like focusing on that. Nico's a great songwriter too, but I trust his visuals. So yeah, I mean, we all kind of have like our job and videos are like the perfect, you know, collection of those Mm -hmm. things, I guess. Beautiful. Yeah, it's great to delegate those jobs. Where I think, yeah, oftentimes I talk to bands where it's like, we have one guy who does a lot of it and everyone else follows him. And it's like, that might work. And it, it works for some people, but it seems unsustainable. It seems like we've got to have a little more democracy <laughs> within this band for it to really thrive. I might have done that. Yeah. I might have been that guy. <laughs> yeah. I might have been that guy at some point, but I am working really hard on uh, not being that There's guy. a reason you're not that guy anymore, I think. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. It's like, I can't, you can't do it all. Yeah. Something will fall through or look bad or be stupid. Yep. So it's, it's all- really a great experience to have like everyone have a, a say. Yeah. You know, like Gray helps a lot with like merch. I just like Grayson's eye in that way. Nico always hates our merch designs. It's crazy. He always hates them. And then he just wears them. I'm like, <laughs> you fucking hated that. And he's like, it's like, yeah, I know, but it's sick. I'm like, I fucking knew it was sick. I, that's why I printed it. But Gray, I can hit Gray with something and he can come back <laughs> at me with like an opinion about it. I swear every band has the same five personalities in them, and it just kind of <laughs> distributed I mean, yeah. a little differently. Of course. They're, yes, absolutely. And Nico's like, hey, I haven't met him. I don't know him, but like, I know that person. Yeah. Okay. I know oh, yeah. every one of those oh, yeah. band yeah, guys. Yeah, we all – well, that's the thing is like you have to be – I always say this like less than 1% of the population is able to do touring because mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just not – Yeah, I don't think a person's supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. But so when you have only 1% – a certain amount of people can pull it off and mm-hmm. do it. And those are the five personalities. So that's <laughs> yes. the type, right? Yeah. Guy who doesn't care at all. Dude that like, you know, is kind of like whatever, but is negative. <laughs> and then like guy who does everything and is like a crazy person. Yep. Yeah. We all, we're all, there. <laughs> we're all accounted for. We're all there. Positive oh. guy. I love positive guy. Yeah. Uh, the other piece of the show that I like to get into that we'll wrap up on here is kind of how we first got into music. Uh, and I, yeah, got some of the story from, the BTL podcast that I heard you were on, uh, I think it was two years ago, give or take. Uh, and yes, you mentioned that your shout out BTL podcast. <laughs> shout out. Uh, you mentioned that your mom was British and got you into the cure at like a young age. Clash. Clash. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Not how... that the cure is bad. Sure. But it was the, the war one. is yes. important. Yes. So the clash comes in. How old are you when this and mom getting you into it also, also feels like, yeah, I feel like generally our music is something that we, we learned at school and came home and mom and dad were like, no, the fuck, you're not listening to that. And that to have mom me. be like, here, on a silver platter is kind yeah. of a fascinating start there. Yeah. I mean, I like, I grew up in a really musical house. They aren't okay. musically inclined, but they just, music is always on and mm-hmm. always being played. And my dad is like really passionate about music. And I, I remember being like, how the fuck does he know all the words to this song? Were they, was it like metal? Was it jazz? What was kind of the. It was like rock. It was okay. like classic rock. Okay. Rolling Stones, the Hood. Yeah, yeah, like Zeppelin and stuff. Yeah. And so. That was like how it kind of started when I was really little. But um, the story you're referring to is uh, Joe Strummer died when I was 11 years old. Joe Strummer is the singer of The Clash. And uh, I've always been like <laughs> weirdly political, like overly political, okay. even, even as a little old. kid. Yeah. I watched Malcolm X, the movie Malcolm X, every day. <laughs> I watched Malcolm in the Middle. For a year. Fair. <laughs> That's fair. I watch Malcolm X every day, and that's not a cred thing. I'm just saying. My parents were like, "Is he gonna watch another fucking movie?" Or like, "What is he doing?" Same movie every day. So I, just, I don't. I was just overly political when I was like young. Interesting. Okay. And so, and I have not stopped. <laughs> and so, uh, that was like just how I was. Mm-hmm. And then, when I was 11, Joe Strummer passed away, and I didn't know what the Clash was. And you're like a little too young to have any really a, any sort of opinion, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I watched the. Grammys? Sure. The Grammys. And uh, Bruce Springsteen, 
who's like one of my dad's favorite artists, did a Joe Strummer. One of my favorite rest stop guys. Great rest stop, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, no, New Jersey is his rest stop. <laughs> um, so he did like a tribute to Joe Strummer. Okay. And they played a London Calling. And it was like an all star band. I have no fucking clue who's in there. And uh, I just was like transfixed. I was like, what the fuck is this? And I could like tell it was vaguely political because it, mm-hmm. it's it's extremely political. But like when you hear it the first time, you're not like a even as a kid certain. Like, yeah. But I just kind of knew. I was like, this is fucking crazy. Yep. And my mom watched it with me and she was like, did you like that? And I was like, yeah. She was like, oh, because that's not a Bruce Springsteen song. She's like, that's a band called The Clash. And I was like, who is that? And she was like, oh, well, honey. <laughs> and like my mom is like, She's a, a saint, and she isn't really strongly opinionated except for about very certain things. Okay. And my dad was always the really opinionated one, but this is the first, not the first time, she had, like, really strong views about abortion that she was very, like, she shared with me at a very young age. She was like, this is why women should be autonomous, and it's ridiculous that Americans even try mm-hmm. to, you know, police this. It's insane. Sure. But she really loved this band, The Clash, and uh, she showed them to me. She gave me a record. Like, she gave me London Calling, and she gave me The Essentials, which is, like, their greatest hits mm-hmm. thing, which was, like, three records, three vinyl. <clears throat> and I had to listen to it, and I was, like, in love with it. And, and then... vinyls that she was giving you? Or was it, like, I think CDs? London Calling was on vinyl, and The Essentials were on a three-disc, like, CD Classic. thing, right? Classic, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then she gave it to me, and she was like, this is this band, and I just, like, fell in love with it. I was just in love with it. Thankfully, she didn't show me the the garbage that <laughs> Clash has made because they're my favorite man in the world. But if you love something, you can be you know at least semi objective about Everything it. Everything has highs and lows. They have some dog shit, but <laughs> yeah. like she just showed me the really good stuff, and I just like fell in love with it, and it just shaped like everything about my music tastes, you know, moving forward. And and she she showed she told me I was like you know eleven twelve, and I was like asking her questions, uh, and I was like, mom, you know, like did you ever see The Clash? And she was like, oh, yes, darling, I saw The Clash. She's like, when I was 20 years old, I saw The Clash. She saw the London Calling CD release show. It was The Clash, Suicide, and The Specials, okay. which is just an insane show yeah. to be at. And it, it was at, like, Glanceberry U. And she was like, she's like, yes, darling, I saw that band. And she has, like, this really soft English accent. And I was like, what was it like? And she goes, she goes uh, she's like, oh, darling, I don't remember a moment of it. I was on <laughs> so much speed. <laughs> and I was like, okay. okay. Yeah. It's like, cool. And she was like, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't remember a fucking second of it. And I was like, that's sick. That's how you know she was there. <laughs> that's how you know she was really there. That's how you know she, but she sure. like gave me all this music and then she showed me other bands. And it was funny because like it came full circle. When I was like 19, I, you know, was really close with all these, you know, like punk dudes in Manchester, New Hampshire who were like really like into hardcore and into this, like these really legitimate bands. And, and they'd be like someone who I was, you know, close friends with, you know, to this day, one of my best friends is like, Oh, have you heard sham 69? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, really? I'm like, yep. <laughs> you know, like I, I don't, my mom just like skipped all me around cuts. and just yeah. was like, this is Cox bar and they're good. And then just like gave me this band. And then yeah. like, this is this band. And she just gave me like the specials. And she was like, this is this band. And, like, I was really fortunate in that way. Damn. How long was it then from being 11 and getting introduced to this to, yeah, starting a first band, I assume somewhere on like 18? Is Dude, where? no. I started my oh, first right band now. when I was like 12. Okay. 13. It sounded like Pennywise. Okay. It was called The Corruption Theory. I should not be saying this on camera. My favorite part. Which parts- is basically <laughs> what gag is, essentially. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. sang in a punk band called The Corruption Theory. Beautiful. Yeah. I uh, I'll end on this note here. Uh, when I ever talk about these like first high school bands we got into, or even before high school bands we got into, uh, I assume the Corruption Theory played some shows that were short of glamorous, to sure. say the least. Certainly. <laughs> what is the high watermark of these short of glamorous uh, shows? Um, we only played one. Okay. And it was both the high and the low, <laughs> the high note and the low note. Uh, there was a venue called the Summit Cafe in Derry, New Hampshire, okay. and I saw. I saw this show there. It was a band called Ambry from New Hampshire. Okay. Shout out Ambry, who like was a formative band. Because, you know, I find punk. My mom shows me punk. And then I'm like, well, what else is there? Mm -hmm. And then it was like metal screamo, Mm -hmm. you know, like that little dance. 
and then Metallica, and you're like, you know, you're you're discovering what you like, sure. what you're into. Sure. And then I went to the show, and it was Ambry and Far Away and the Cadence. That was those were the bands that played, <laughs> and it was at this place called the Summit Cafe, and I was like, oh my god. And then in the fucking in between the bands. They would play music videos on the wall. This is a thing people used to do. Okay. And it was Saves the Day. They just played Saves the Day music videos. And I was like, what, what is this? You know, I'm like finding these bands and I'm like <laughs> listening at your funeral. And I'm like, holy fuck. Like, this is a very formative night for young That's me. Funny, yeah. And then I was like, we have to play this venue. And then the Corruption Theory played their first and only show Hell yes. at the Summit Cafe. Was it literally a cafe during the day that then put shows on? Yeah, they sold coffee. Nice. <laughs> Uh, the stage was like as big as the table, I bet. and uh, yeah, we played us. I don't know. We played a uh, played a show, and I don't remember any of the songs, <laughs> but they were all political. I just hated George Bush. It was Pretty like that time hate. I yeah. fucking hated George yeah. Bush, and I was like mad about it. Yeah. And, and then uh, yeah, we played a show. And there was like so four people there. And I think we got made fun of pretty bad. I I can't imagine how fun it would be to see a twelve year old get on stage and yell about George Bush. Like, yeah, <laughs> you're probably right. You were probably That's justified. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what was wrong with age, me. And, I was yeah. like, fuck this dude. I was like a young little kid. Yeah, and I had a I had like a Notre Dame hat. I don't know. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> Notre Dame. Those hat. are both. That is both the high and the low. And then it broke up. That's both because yeah, the drummer yeah. wanted to go play um, ska music. That's I, real. Uh, and I was like, I draw a line. I won't play ska music. Thank you. I love the specials. First and second generation ska rules. This kid not didn't want to play <laughs> Op Ivy. You know, he wanted to play like fucking Less Than Jake. And I was like, I'm not doing uh, that. One of my buddies in high school was a big Mighty Mighty Boss Tones fan. Band rocks. And so some of my first concerts, what he would go to, they have like a, like a New Year's it was a hometown throwdown, I think was the name. Oh, yeah, it was baby. like their big show. Absolutely. And we would go and like wait outside Dickie in Allen, shorts and t-shirt and be first in line. And it was one of those of like the first half hour is like, this is kind of cool. And by the second hour and a half of their set, it was like, all right, why is this guy still there was dancing time, on stage? Listen, no, respect to that guy. <laughs> he earns that money. Because uh, I've taken shows off before and he, that dude's never done it. No. He just danced it out yeah. the whole time. Um, there was like a time in the 90s where I wasn't, ska was not for me. Yeah. Uh, but the Mighty Mighty Boston's rule yes. and have always ruled. They've had to rule through the whole time. I'll, they were in Clueless, a great movie. Yes. And their songs in Clueless kicked ass. They've got some great songs, but they played a lot more than those I'd songs. Watch every, I'd watch every minute. That band fucking rocks. I stand by that. Band kicks ass. It was, But yeah. this kid wanted to go play something else. He yeah. wanted to do yeah. something different. And I, I was like, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't do that. So then the corruption theory broke up, sadly. Bummer. And now it's basically just Great American Ghost. Hey, let's be real. It's comeback season. Everyone's <laughs> doing their 20-year reunions. Like a political metal band. <laughs> Dude, please come back and sing about George Bush again. It'd be yeah. so funny. I'm, I'm just, just pissed die. about how everyone thinks he's cute. Yeah. They've like cutified him. Yeah. He like, oh, he paints. He sucks. He's a war criminal. It's crazy. People are like, oh, he's so cute. And like, <laughs> look at the picture he painted of Michelle Obama. I'm like, fuck that guy. He killed so many people. He sucks. We're just cutifying him. It bums me out. This is the corruption theory in me coming out. It's there, dude. That 20 year reunion is manifesting <laughs> as we speak. I hope not. Dear God, I hope not. <laughs> Beautiful. What a time to be alive here. Uh, Ethan, before I let you get out of here, uh, the Tragedy of the Commons will be available uh, January 20, January 31st, sorry, 2025 via Sharptown. Uh, new single, Lost in the Outline, came out yesterday, so go stream that everywhere. Uh, Ethan, where can they find you on social media? Where can they find the band on social media? Ugh. Where can people follow you and tell you to great today? That's great. My yeah. Instagram is Ethan G. Harrison. Band's Instagram is great Amer at Great American Ghost. Beautiful. Uh, TOTC.com is where you can pre-order the record. I might be promoting the wrong website. We'll put the right URL in the description. Just use the link tree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everyone Lovely. uses the link tree Beautiful. anyway. Okay. We're on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Nobody uses Facebook. Uh, that's it. We have TikTok. Hell I think yes. it's gag metal. I cool. don't know. I don't run our TikTok, <laughs> so fucking, you know, beats me. <laughs> that Wild West. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, the Wild West of TikTok. We're on there if you want to find us. But overall, like, stream the music. You know, message me on Instagram if you want. Tell me what you think. Hell yes. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing to share art with people. Absolutely. I uh, I am very grateful to do it. So thank you for having me. Of course. And thank you to anybody who listens to this or watches this. And thanks to anybody who, like, listens to Great American Ghost. And yes. I'm very appreciative. So endlessly grateful.
I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming through. If you did make it this far, please leave a comment about how you saw Ethan <laughs> pissing his pants when he was 18 <laughs> at a show. Yes. That yeah, would yeah, make yeah, me yeah, very yeah. happy. Please do that. Maybe only one of us very happy. But if we can uh, keep that comment going, yeah. that'll be I, I look forward to it. Awesome. Episode 81 from everyone. We did it. Hell yeah. <laughs>